Okay, we'll get started. Uh, welcome everyone, session 45. And since it's been a couple of weeks, uh, you should have the Lost City map up. And just a recap, uh, you all had started at this tower. And you had found uh, one of Count, Count Lau's abandoned camps, although it wasn't so abandoned because he did have a couple of henchmen over. And it talked about uh, where he was activating the star's delay to go to Karsika. So he could activate the star's delay there and suck Galarian into the realm of Karsika. Um, you know where two of the uh, star delays are. Uh, they're marked on the map with the S's. And you are headed en route to them. And then if you go to the Snarl map... Um, There's a bunch of blood on the ground now. Uh, yeah. I'm going to cover that here in just a second. Uh, you met this weird guy who did not engage in combat and he was talking about he's been here since uh, for a very long time. 3,000 years ago. He's a broken soul Mario but claims to be an essentially uh, noble man. Really has two ruined eye sockets and terrible wounds despite his appearance. Uh, that is correct. And then you fought a couple of uh, creatures, one of which was a div. And defeated him, which uh, leads to the blood stain on the map. <laughs> Um, what was the guy's name? Um, Ape? Ah, he didn't put a uh, credit line on it. Um, anyway, one of the uh, newest extensions on the forum is Advanced Combat, of which, um, if you haven't checked it out, I put a link in both Discord and Fantasy Grounds for it. I uh, absolutely love it. It incorporates multiple extensions all into one package. Like um, one, of, one of them it includes is image layers. Uh, he's done a lot of um, integration. Uh, I can click a non-active token on the map and it will jump to the combat tracker entry. Uh, as you can see, uh, Poppy has this nice uh, orangish border around her to show the active token. And as you move, uh, you know. Uh, the green border, you mean? Yeah, yeah I'm saying yeah. green. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, it's truly, I can see it, but it looks orangish to me. I hate being colorblind. It sucks. Um, but one of the things that it does, uh, turning on detailed wounds category, and let me throw a new icon on the tracker. But we have uh, this pit fiend that appeared behind a dualian. And as it takes damage, um, It will overlay a bloodstained token on it. <laughs> and the more damage that it takes, uh, the bloodier the icon gets, so you have a visual reference of wounds. 
and there he is uh that's an interesting disabled icon <laughs> uh no kidding and then 332 uh you have uh two different death head icons for uh enemy stable and enemy dying and whatnot and what i didn't know um when you turn the token off uh it'll leave the blood stain on the map <laughs> great You're basically saying that our map's just going to be a wash in blood <laughs> uh you know i'm thinking at the end of it yes it probably will be and uh one other very nice feature uh like uh the rock who is all the time flying damn it uh using shift and the mouse wheel you can easily set the height to show up on the tokens wow great hey that is cool yeah and uh, a lot of nice features definitely check it out uh, there's Don't don't suppose dynamic lighting is one of those. Don't we wish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one of the guys in uh, my Sunday game mentioned it, and holy crap, it's uh, relatively new, but the guy's been interlacing all the extensions together for a couple years. So, uh, <clears throat> you defeated the div uh, there in the corner of the snarl. What would you like to do now? Your goal I'll was ask, to get to the star delay. I'll ask Ape, are there are a lot of evil outsiders here. Uh, well, uh, being a place that is, uh, inherently evil, uh, yes, we do get our fair share of otherworldly visitors. How long have they, visitors, how long are they here? Because m most of the things we found here seem to have been corrupted by the seeds. Uh, you know, um... I can't say for sure how many are here at any given time. Uh, you know, some of them have been here for quite a while. And the corruption, well, you know, this is a very powerful evil in this place. But have they were apparently not cor being corrupted unlike some of the other beings we saw? Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, actually being a seeded creature. If you're talking about the tentacles as corruption and so forth. Correct. Yeah, uh, some are selected and some aren't. I'm actually going to say the deities play dice with the universe. Yeah, well, I hope I have better roles than you all. <laughs> well, let's keep moving. We're off to the star delay. Which, funny that you should mention it. Um... As you round the corner there, um, uh, 
Okay, yeah, that really doesn't match too well. Uh, you see more than a dozen immense stone towers crisscrossing messily above, and uh, they form a manner of a roof for this large cavern. And there's broken basalt scree that creates a beach that slopes gently into the water to the north. And you see this nearly cylindrical pillar standing near the shore. Does this cylindrical pillar look like the Star Stelai? Because I mean, like, everything here is a cylindrical pillar, apparently. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you have enough experience that you would recognize it as the Star Stelai. Okay, and where is it on the map, or is it just off the map right now? Should I be on the combat so tracker? Really oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. Uh, yes, d Rampage, you should be on the combat tracker. And the star to lie is to the west of Rock. Is it that, oh, is that, it's that small thing? Yeah, I'm going to drop step right in the middle of it. Boom. Fancy seeing you here, Staff. Yes, everybody's day just got a little brighter. <laughs> a little more explosive, at least. Yes, there you go. Okay, so I assume we move over and look at it, and then we have the ritual that we found that you linked. I don't know if that's in notes right now or something. Uh, anyway, the point is we knew um, the Star Stelai activation or tuning ritual. Uh, yes, you do. And um, let's see, I'm going to take a Dillion. Okay, I need everyone to make a will save. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Right, it was rolling for me. And Poppy rolled for me too. Let's see. Okay, uh, Steph, um, I, as you all walk into uh, this section of the cavern, um, you start smelling this very powerful scent, and um, looking over toward the lake and this is a pleasant 
pleasant scent. Um, out of game, this is a mirage. And uh, you failed your will save. And what you see is a mirage that would most compel you to approach. You know, you see a lost loved one, a child in need of help. But anyway, something is... Uh, you're seeing something that's making you walk over to it at the edge of the lake. Uh, Steph, what are you seeing? What are you looking at? Uh... Some some chicks, I assume. I just got from this. They're beckoning me. This is not Where's the rock when you need him to go grab stuff? <laughs> uh, somebody might want to grab stuff. I think he's seeing things. Uh, Rip. Yeah, uh, that moves by a mile there, Poppy. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, my first roll of the night was a 20, so that only makes sense. <laughs> okay, and... Um, if he keeps going more than a few steps and nobody acts, I'm going to start doing something. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's taken a few steps. Uh, he is going to the water. Else going to try to stop him, or do I need to start casting spells? And I'm small. I probably can't do much more I than st I stun him. I use stunning fist. Uh, Ryder, would you like to uh, make a perception check? Sure. You notice this big disturbance in the water and you get the feeling that something is about to attack and uh, let's roll for initiative and I'll even give you enough time to shout out a warning to the party <laughs> uh yeah say right yourselves or something be playing in the water my rolling better get better, or this is going to be a long, long night. Um, or, or short night. Well, and round one. Okay, Ruck, you are up, sir. You've heard the warning, you know there's a disturbance in the water. what is in the water uh you know yeah you're close enough that I would give it to you <laughs> love it great well, this should be fun. Let's make hey, that doesn't have... Yeah, that's not a girl. What the hell? Still probably looks like a girl to you. There's diamonds. I'm looking at them. I love them with the big claws. Uh... Okay. And... So he's, so he's hiding just below the surface, right there at the edge? Uh, yes. And you do notice that there's, uh... <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, there's more! Oh, uh, boy. Okay, then. Uh, um, yeah, you you can see all three of them. Um, uh, the second two are 
right now like a fungus covering the rocks and so forth. But I'm able to tell that they're actually a creature instead of just fungus on the rock. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it. they look like uh, drifting seaweed in the water, but occasionally the water, you don't know if it's a reflection, but it seems to take on the shape of a humanoid. Great. Well, I'm worried about that. I guess I attack the floating fungus. Uh, so we'll just punch it. When I say punch it, I mean slam it. Bring it, slam. This, this one. Okay, um... Oh yeah, he's definitely... I'm actually gonna put them in legit squares. So he goes running past me to attack Poppy? Uh, no, actually, we're, we're going to try a full round attack on you, which is two claws and two tentacles. <laughs> Whatever. He's, got, he's got nothing to say. The, the speaker for the deep isn't going to say anything. He's not going to speak for the deep? I he think he is. He's more of an action, action kind of guy, though. And he gets Poppy with one claw, and... That is some get, serious reach. Get with one claw? One, yeah, um, he said Poppy. I I'm Poppy. sorry, he got Rampage. He <laughs> what should you do? Make Poppy. up your mind. Stop lying to us. <laughs> uh, okay, and let's see. And Steph, I'm going to need you to... I need you to make a fortitude save, please. And the Jesus! Are we still 13th level? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Steph, and... I've now rolled three twos and a three. If you add them all together, I got a nine. Okay, so first of all, what do I know about these fungoid siren things that this crystal is attacking? Okay, one more time, Eric. What do I know about this fungoid siren thing that Rita is attacking as the crystal ooze? Okay, the fungal crap. Uh, you know, it is an aquatic plant. Uh, it does have a uh, blind sense and tremor sense. Uh, it is capable of casting mirages. Um, it tries to um, let's see it's got a powerful grab 
It's got the mirages. Um, uh, you know, it's got plant traits. It's immune to mind affecting, paralysis, poison, polymorph, sleep, stunning. Uh, it does have DR5 slashing and it resists uh, 10 of cold damage. Okay, and what about the speaker for the deep thing? What does that look like? Um, and and truly, uh, you know that this fungoid siren is a free-floating mass of intelligent seaweed that's capable of luring its victims to their deaths via a powerful hallucinogenic pheromone. Uh, its favorite method of attack is uh, luring the prey into striking distance and grabbing the entranced creature and attempting to crush it to death. The speaker for the deep, meanwhile, is the bastard child of Cthulhu and some poor crab. Uh, why do you how, why do you think it's a bastard child? Can't it just be the normal child? I mean, we we know Cthulhu is the father. Then it's not a bastard, is it? I guess that depends on which definition you use. <laughs> Does I mean that? Like if you if you watch Game of Thrones up until this le spoilers if you are way behind, but we've known up until this last season that Jon Snow was the illegitimate son of um, whatever his fucking name is who died in season one. Uh, Ed Stark. It wasn't his acknowledged father though. That's what everyone speculated. Yeah. He yeah, but Ed was assumed to be the father. Ed was Edward Stark was assumed to be the father, uh -huh. but John was still considered a bastard. So even if we know that Cthulhu is the father of this crab, he could still be a bastard. Is Cthulhu making child support payments? That's all I have to ask. Probably yeah. not. Okay. Anyway, so what does the speaker for the deep look like? Uh, the the speaker of the deep is classified as uh, undead. However, it is an advanced... Hang on, is it Speaker of the Deep or Speaker for the Deep? Because I said for and you said of, and the text says for. This is really important. This is what we need to worry about. Which for the Deep. Okay. Uh, the Speaker for the Deep. Um, is, is that all of the Deep or just... And I just want to address him properly when I, when I speak to the Speaker, you know? Like, if I, <laughs> what if I use the wrong title, okay? <laughs> what about the middle of the Deep? <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker uh, is a seated chul, C-H-U-U-L, and um, what you would know about them, um, they have undead traits, uh, they're immune to Mind affecting, bleed, death effects, disease, paralysis, poison, sleep, stunning, ability drain, energy drain, exhaustion, fatigue, and. Oh, just Is that right? Immune to fort saves and <laughs> immune to non lethal. So it's undead, okay. Uh, they do have uh, DR5 uh, bludgeoning or slashing. They resist 10 cold and 10 electricity. Uh, they are quick healers. One even might say fast healing. Oh, goody. But not quick regenerating. Healing. But not what? But not regenerating, fast healing only, right? Correct. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, that would be, um, about all you know. Okay. And 
Now, Steph is further away than Rock. It's too far away from Rock. Rook, would you have moved up to stop Steph? Or were you just literally hanging back, ignoring everything? I probably would have stepped up, up a little bit, at least, yeah. All right, we're to mute. How far would you say that Rook would have gotten if he was moving to try to stop Steph? Uh, you know, I'd give him there. Mm -hmm. And, and then, sorry, did, did I notice anything happen to Steph when he failed his fort save? Not that I necessarily know he failed his fort save, but did I observe anything happen to him when he got hit by the claw? I, uh, no. And let's see. Weird guy is just going to go east. Uh, siren number nine. Just gonna try to slam into Ryda. And Eric. By the way, did you track off a rage round there, Rita? Are you there, Rita? Can you hear us, Rita? Oh, sorry, what's up? Did you track off a rage round the last round? Didn't use rage. Oh, sorry. Yes, you did. Yeah. Well, I used a rage round, apparently. I didn't mean to. Well, I dragged it off. Okay. I forgot it was still active. It turned off other this things. Could be, that was one of them. I don't know how... Does the chul kind of look like bad news, Wunsch Mute? How, how much of a threat do I think these pose to us? Uh, yeah, they could, um... Between the two, the chul is, uh... a better ass than the sirens. Ah, fuck it. Oh, and the Speaker of the Deep also does have uh, channel resistance. Alright, I'll cast haste, start a bard song, and take a five foot step. Now I guess I will scoot up there. on the ankles. Okay. Number five. Bob's going to move up, and he's going to try to slam into Poppy. Rampage! So am I still enamored with this Mirage, or am I snapped out of it since I've got a claw up my ass? Uh, I'm going to say that you're snapped out of it. Nice. All of it. Okay, um, well, and I will. Steph, um... I, I don't want to say you're sickened or poisoned or under any condition right now, but you just don't feel quite right after <laughs> taking that <laughs> hit. Of course I don't. 
Well, sticker for the deep is the butthole. What I or, know kind of things might happen if you're hit by the seeded monstrosity or jewel things. Was that a question? <laughs> yes. With my knowledge of both the seeded corruption and chules, would I know what might happen if a chul seeded claw hits somebody? Um. Uh, yeah, you would uh, think that it, it probably passes along the, uh, lack of a better term, the virus. <laughs> The virus? That's it? No name to it or anything? Uh, Are you talking about the seeded consumption thing that we talked about? Ah, uh, yes. You become seeded. Uh, that's good. Congrats! I do not recall what that means offhand, but that doesn't sound like Th That's the thing that over time, like, Turin killed the people in Turin, remember, they were burning the bodies and threw them over, threw them off the tower, which then, like, rose with the tentacles and shit. Uh, and sure. We have... Hmm, okay. So, uh... And, and you would know that this is uh, over time. It's not immediate. Does he know if there's a cure? That's the important question. He can think about it out of combat. <laughs> it's not my turn. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not hosed right this second, so I'm, until further, until I fall over and start twitching, let's uh, get through this round. Um, let's see how many bombs I got. Oh, I got all my bombs, so I'm just going to take a five foot step back. Does this thing have a ten foot reach or five foot? Uh, everything is uh, five feet. I'm sorry. The funguses have 10 foot reach, uh, the big guy's speaker only has 5. Alright, well I guess I'm gonna take a step back and throw Why my not bombs. Go. Why not go to the right? Um, like to there? You should also... Like to there. Oh, yeah, I can do that. You can fish so, up, like, By the way, Winston, I, I realize that your answer might be, it cannot be contained, but uh, which squares is the, the Siren 9 supposed to be in? There we go. So at that point, Steph, you have unless they have some way to get around cover, then you have uh, they won't be able to take tax opportunity against you. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect, thanks. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna bomb the crap so out of this. Bomb oh, is it? So let's see here. So that means I need uh, to put on a rapid shot. And then I get Four, that gives me four bombs total, right? Memory serves. Are you fucking kidding me?
Now remember, when you actually roll the damage, you have to use the weapon, not the the spell. Right. So I hit him three times. Yes, and one bomb to calculate what the hell happened to it. Yeah. And then let's see here. We got to do a eight sider. So three. So one, two, three. That puts it on the back side. Uh, so no effect. It doesn't hit anybody. No splash damage. Well, you're one range increment away, right? Yes. I mean, I guess. So I'm shooting for the square that I'm pointing at there. So it'd be one square to the left. Well, I think what you're saying is you'd be shooting for his bottom right square, presumably, right? Right. So which way is three? Three is T or so it goes counter goes counterclockwise. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One is the square that I shot at. It's just stuck in so it goes one, two. So three would be. Well, one wouldn't be the square you shot at. Well, one is supposed to be the direction from which you're shooting. Okay, so we're saying that one is right there. Right. And therefore, and we're going counterclockwise, so there it lands over there to the one west of Poppy? Yes. Uh, one, uh, two, three. On the left of Poppy. So okay, so all three people over there take splash damage, right? Poppy, the speaker, and the fungoid siren. Also, both Fungoid Siren takes splash damage from the other three bombs as well, right? Yes. And does does Fungo Fungoid Siren 5, does it occupy that square right to the left of Poppy? Yes. So both Fungoids would take a four total splash of four damage. splash damage. Yep. Poppy would take the more. reflex saves. So, four more to the sirens. Well, four, four yeah. splash damages. Each splash damage is 14. But they get a Seven reflex save. save. Right. So, so, good. so each one should make... Okay, so let's, let's add this up. So, the speaker for the deep is going to take one splash damage, half... If he makes his save, so make his save. Yeah, he didn't make it. So he <laughs> take, so he takes fourteen more points. Now, how are you getting fourteen? That's my minimum splash damage. How are you calculating that? Well, it's it's seven for the bombs, one for each, plus. Actually, it'd be more than more than fourteen. Enough it's seven plus eight, fifteen. So it's seven plus my intelligence modifier. Okay, so your intelligence modifier is eight. You said. Let me double check that. But uh, yes, currently my intelligence modifier is eight. Okay, so you take seven from the minimum bomb damage, plus eight from your, that's 15, plus one point, point blank shot, that's 16, plus three from Inspire Courage, that's 19, plus another 1d6, which we'll say is two, so that's 21 damage from Splash? 21 damage. That's from the Sonic damage. Okay, so, so Speaker for the Deep takes 21. And then you just want to use that same roll for all of them? Yeah, that'll for work. For the Okay, so that means Fungoid Siren Nine can make three reflex saves. Four. Right? Or is it no is it only no. how big is the splash? Only, okay. You're right. It, You're it, a it, smaller splash. Three, yeah. Um the lowest was a 17. He needs to make a DC 24 right now. Uh, he saved on one. So he would take 21 plus 21 plus 10, so that is 52 damage. 
And that's on nine. Yep. That's on nine. And then uh, Siren five needs to make four reflex saves. And Poppy needs to make one. You want to get it out of the way, Poppy? So Poppy takes ten damage. And you said DC was uh, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah, he missed on one. So he so would take thirty plus twenty-one. It's also it would take fifty-one damage then. And Poppy takes how many? Fourteen. Ten. Ten. Sixteen. Okay. And was this thing immune to acid? I mean, if it was immune, it shouldn't have taken the damage because it says it's type no. acid. No, not at all. It's immune to paralysis, cold, polymorph, sleep, stunning. So I would add on the... the cause I, heard, I heard you rattle off a bunch of immunities, but I, and I didn't hear acid in there. No, no, yeah, no. So, so the speaker should, but the deep would be taking 3d6 acid next turn. Yep, there we go. I'm sure it will still be alive. <laughs> With how much I thought you rolled a one, it. but you still just splash damaged it half to death. <laughs> Um, is this its native terrain? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, this guy's looking rough, so let's, uh, view my rage, I guess, and we'll expend my rage. Hopefully I hit. Which I'm able to. And I expend my rage for maximized damage to make sure it stays down. Ugh. And, uh, yeah, I'm good. Oh, really? 3d6? <laughs> 4 damage! Thank you for allowing me to go again. <laughs> and he's going after Poppy, two claws and two tentacles. And... Got what? One... No crit for you! Two hits, no crit. Both of them on... One tentacle, one claw. And then I need to do... It's on the speaker.
And Poppy, he does manage to grab you with uh, one of the claws, so you are grappled. Oh, that's obnoxious. Yeah, I figured you'd enjoy that. And let me get you to uh, make a will save. A will save? I'm sorry. <laughs> Constitution. Fortitude? Fortitude, sorry. <laughs> One of the three. Just out of curiosity. No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry, it is a will save. Wait, why is it a will save all of a sudden? Right, no, no, you're right. Sorry. There's two aspects to this. I need you to make a fortitude save. Ah, okay. Just out of curiosity, what's the DC for it? Uh, 20. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> My fortitude is uh, plus 16, so that would have been difficult to fail. <laughs> You can always run a roll a lot, though. Yeah, it would have to be five or less. I'm not saying it's impossible, but odds of success are better. Okay, I will move over to there. I'll keep I don't suppose you have freedom of movement or anything you can cast on me. I already spent one spell on this encounter. One spells too many. I stab it. Alright, I can still attack at least once while grappled, right? Not with your two hundred weapon. You could draw a different weapon and attack with that. Like you could, you could draw a dagger or a short sword or something. Do you have a separate weapon? Um, it's not two handed. I have my wooden shield. <laughs> well, I, I guess. Which is a technicality. Technically, I guess you could grab it and try to slam it into the guy if you have a. be using it as a melee attack, I guess. Alright, light shield bash it is. <laughs> You've got to be shitting me! <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it only had like one hit point left when I bombed it, right? Well, I hit it for... 16 and that wasn't quite enough then Poppy's 8 was enough to kill it so uh, yeah I was really expecting the acid damage to take it mm. okay number 5 we're gonna do 2 slams let's see he would be distracted by Ruck And I got one slam in. And, Rock, you feel the seaweed trying to entangle you, but you're able to break free of it. I hear that. Well, uh, I think you guys got the Fungoid Siren 5 under control. I assume I still feel like crap. Uh, yeah, you you don't feel bad, you just feel like something ain't right. It's growing. It's 
starting the obsidian mining. Yeah, um... My dog is protecting me. I think I'm going to drink my one of my vials of antitoxin. So that when I have to make another fortitude save, I get a plus five bonus. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I'll let you guys club on the fungoid siren. And Ruck, you're up. Alright, um, I'll full attack. Don't think it'll be needed, but... And you just crit twice in the same attack. Good grief. Yeah, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty nice. Alright, well he's dead, and nothing else is alive anymore, so... No more attacks for me. Okay. Bye. Their bodies... Don't say anything else. Um... You know, fall back into the water, the seaweed starts dissipating. And let's see. Yeah, uh, you are not detecting the presence of anything else. I hear slime. Well, that's good to know. And unfortunately, there's uh, no treasure. Lame. I got lemon and butter. <laughs> So, uh, yes, you've defeated the bad guys, you have the star stelae behind you, um... And, let's see... What would you like to do next? Anyone? Well, unless I see anything else that's relevant, I'd assume that I tell everyone else to step back and start the ritual to activate the star stelae. Uh, yes, you need to attune it, and... Let's see... This camp, uh, 
Okay, where's the... There we go. And I'm going to reshare the ritual for you. Uh, you know, it'll take up to uh, 30 minutes. Um, I guess you have to act. Yeah, it affects only one, so you have to attune and activate the other one as well. Wait, you mean you can't just sit here and activate all three? That's what. What? Yeah, it, it, it's saying just one. That's outrageous. So it's an hour and a half to do all three? Well, we have to actually get to the other one, but yes. Oh, okay. Now, however, at. Uh, 12 hours per character level, you know, you've got a lot of time to reach the other ones and turn them on. Okay, I will tell everyone else to, you know, get back and I will attempt to activate it over the half hour of ritual, so they'll see me chanting and doing shit for half an hour. So, you want me to make the appropriate checks? Uh, yes. Let's, uh, make an Arcana, Dungeoneering, and Spellcraft. Unless it needs to be done in that particular order, because it looks like it's alphabetical. Why don't we start with the Spellcraft? Uh, any order you want to do it? I do not succeed. <laughs> Oh, hang on, hang on a second. I, I just realized that I, I still had the up my sleeve that I forgot to do. But I meant to, we talked about it last time, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. One second, one second, one second. Yeah, okay, so I, prior to that, while getting ready to do the ritual, I use my mnemonic vestments, just somewhere around here, and I use a scroll of investigative mind on myself, expending a level 3 spell in order to do that. Okay. And therefore, I, whenever I do, investigative mind is whenever I attempt an appraised knowledge linguistic or spellcraft check, I can roll take twice and take the higher result. So, therefore, I will expend one use of this and I will go down from 13 uses to 12 uses. But I can make two spellcraft checks here and hope this other one is a little better. And it is. So with one use of investigative mind, can you edit the effect to take it down to 12 from 13? Sure can. All right. So we don't have the guidance from the cleric who left us. Or oh, Al's wisdom. I can guide you. Do you want guidance? I can. Uh, we, we talked about doing all that shit. Yeah, like the Al's wisdom and the guidance. Sure, you also have Perry Gal for the next guidance. I think it's a give you over, yeah. I'd say old, if Spellcraft is the only one I can't auto-succeed on, I believe, is the thing. That's why okay, I was well, here. Gotcha. If you remember the whole discussion we had on it. Okay, so with that Investigative like Mind... Yeah, I know, right? So with Investigative Mind, I barely succeed on the Spellcraft check. Then I need to do a Knowledge Arcana check. So remember, ignore the roll. We're only looking at the flat modifier. So I have a 41. That beats the 28. I need to do a Knowledge Dungeoneering. I have, lo and behold, a 41. That beats the 25. So I pass the Spellcraft check with the 30 with Investigative Mind. And I auto-succeed on the Arcana and Dungeoneering. Even rolling, even a 1 will succeed. So, therefore, presumably after... 
half an hour, I attune it and take 46 backlash damage from the toll on my body or something. You said 46. I like that better than the 17 I rolled. <laughs> 4d6. I got it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now you add the numbers together. 4 and 6 together. It's a 10. No, that's not how math works. You add the numbers <laughs> together. So is 1 plus 1 11 or 2? It's 11. Everyone knows this. Let's see. It's basic math. You're right. Okay, so, um, you know, the star delay, it, uh, starts vibrating with its, uh, <clears throat> this energy and so forth, and, um, As it's, uh, once it becomes activated, you see these, uh, yellow eldritch ruins that appear on the surface and so forth, and, uh, you're confident that the way this puppy's humming that you did the spell correctly. Good job. Whew. Well, that was fun. One down, two to go. Alright, so unless there's something else to do here, does Ape think there's anything else that we should look at or do before we leave? Uh, no, because, uh, you know, the this section has either been pretty much destroyed or, you know, it's been flooded. So there's not much of interest unless you're into rock hunting. Which we are. I mean, Who doesn't like that? Is rock hunting like falcon hunting where you use a rock to hunt stuff? Like we, we say pull and send the rock after it? No, you should say pull, and we shoot arrows with a rock. Uh, I don't. I don't think a Dolan would like that much. Oh well. Yeah, well, he should have been here. <laughs> okay, setting off for the next one. Did John Discord earlier, like half an hour ago? Who did? Did you? Join Discord? In private message on Discord, I sent you a message half an hour ago. Oh, no, I, I just now saying it. He has no interest in answering you. Uh, that's what I figured. Uh, it, it was the or something. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, truly you were able to see the door because of, uh, your mind being sold. <laughs> you know, when Count Lao sacrificed you to the, uh, the mad poet. I just hate when you get sacrificed to the mad poet. All right, so we retrace our steps, get out of here, head to the next thing. Okay. Seriously, y'all couldn't put a shortcut on that? Okay. 
Give me just a second to find the map here. Ah, turn off shared and I can see the rest of the maps. Here we go. Uh, guys, do you mind if we uh, take 10 minutes here? Yeah, it's a good time anyways. Sounds good. I gotta figure out Find where it. we're going next. <laughs> Happens.
Okay, well, we won't need him for a minute. You back with us, Eric? Yep. Yeah, easy at work. Okay, uh, you make your way to the eastern side of the city, and um, you see the short faucet tower, and it's ringed with these unadored unadored columns and there's open doors at uh, street level that lead to a chamber below and this so uh, is Ape still with us here or did he leave us uh yeah he, he's still with you uh, and we're like on the other side of the city he's just following us around uh, yeah, you know, he went to see what kind of trouble you get into. <laughs> okay. But uh, you, you have this round sanctuary that's situated below, and up top of it there's an observatory. And there's a uh, steep set of steps that ascend to the observatory from each of the four cardinal directions. They go up 20 feet, and... Um, You see four steps of um, the dashed lines are actually passages inside.
And uh, as you get close, I need everyone to um, make a will save, please. Don't show this again. Yeah, that's not going to apply, so, okay. Uh, but yes, uh, you've got the circular tower in front of you, uh, four steps and four doorways. Is there any reason that we can see circling around it to take any particular direction? Uh, no, you can't. And uh, Abe does tell you that um, does tell us that that there are some nagas that occupy this tower. Okay, and those are like snake women? Yes. Anything in particular that I should know about them besides the fact that they're snake women? Uh, da -da 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 -da. He tells you... Yeah, that they're lunar nagas. Uh, they're patient watchers of the night sky, which is probably why they chose the spot for the <coughs> nice observatory upstairs. Um, they're about 10 feet. Uh, they stretch about 10 feet from uh, tip to tail. Um, they are nocturnal creatures for the most part. Uh, they do have the power of hypnosis. Uh, they're poisonous. Well, they're women, I mean, we already... Oh, you don't mean in that way? No, but I'll allow that. <laughs> uh, that was a good one. Don't get credit for that. So, and you know, they have uh, dark vision, low light. Uh, they can see invisibility. Um, they're immune to disease and mind-altering effects. Uh, they do have fast healing. Are they nice? No, that depends on your alignment. Oh, great. What alignment did I like? Okay, um, I guess we start walking up and see if uh, any Nagar challenges us or some minion of theirs, if they have them, I don't know what to expect here. Hopefully we can not murder everything, maybe. Well, you know, fortunately it's kind of daylight. <laughs> So they'll think we're trying to sleep, sneak up on them in their sleep and kill them, and they'll be hostile? <laughs> okay. Um, yes, uh, as, uh, who's going up the stairs first? 
Who do you think? Eric, obviously. Obviously. I'll fall behind him. Okay, uh, as you come to the top of the stairs and you're looking around... Damn it. Uh, you see hundreds of stylized stars adorning the walls and the ceiling of this chamber. And many of them are connected by lines to form the menagerie of constellations. Uh, the floor and ceiling both curve outward, forming a gentle bowl depression and a domed arch, respectively. And you see a series of patterned silk cushions and warm bronze braziers providing unexpected comfort for such an inhospitable reason. And, uh... Erica, you want to go ahead and make a knowledge arcana? <laughs> sure. Let, let, let's. Uh, is this Geography like or nature? Uh, I'll go with arcana, and let, unless there's a reason I think the others would be more effective than arcana. Uh, no. Okay, well, I'm going to look around, consult my book of the lore master, and do all that kind of fun stuff. So that's me. Uh, again, we ignore the actual roll part, right? So, gives me a 56 on my Knowledge Arcana. Okay, uh, you do indeed uh, recognize these. You know, you've seen star maps before, and you know this is a star map. But as you're looking around, uh, the first thing that you notice... Um, this is not your star system. All the stars on the ceiling are unfamiliar. And what kind of knowledge check do I need to make to make them familiar? Uh, <clears throat> one of the um, the stars ha has been. It, it's just got a simple X to mark it. And that's the first thing that you notice. And the second thing is, uh, this guy is asleep over in the corner. Okay, um, that doesn't look like a normal person, so let me ask a few questions. Now, I'm not trying to, th this is not meant to imply that he's fat. This is a different kind of question, okay? How large is this person? Is this like a humanoid it's a size? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, he is considered huge. Oh, very. Oh, you just put him on the map. Yes, uh, so that that is not a human. Yes, that. that Are you concerned. sure? Okay. Oh, she don't want human. Could be very big boned. He's a plus size model. I think yeah. it's probably like a plus 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 size model. So we're we're required to love him as he is, or we're haters. Uh, looking at this giant fellow, I'm going to guess it is probably some kind of giant. Um, do I know what kind he might be? Is that the right guess, or is this like some kind of gin, but we just can't see his swirly bottom or something like that? Um, uh, yeah, you can tell that he is uh, definitely indeed a slightly different kind of giant. Um, they are considered moon giants. Um, they dwell in the rocky bad badlands and other scarred deserted places. They revere the moon, stars, comets and they seek wisdom out of the celestial movements. And uh, they are very philosophical creatures, however, you do know that they can, be, they can become violent when they're disturbed or 
under the influence of a bad moon. And to give you a size estimate, um, most of them stand about 24 feet tall and weigh almost 18,000 pounds. Oi. Okay. Well, uh, I will suggest. I will tell. Suggest everyone else make a show out of like standing around in the different corners, well away from the guy, and make a show of like looking interested at the stars and stuff around them. Not like they're you know waiting to ambush him as he wakes up or something. Like you're more up. Like, we're going to wake him up. Yes. Uh, okay. I'll do my wait, best. Wait. You, you realize that, that in order to activate the star celeb, we're going to have to go through a half-hour ritual of me doing crazy I things. really think we should attempt to do it while he's sleeping. It's, maybe he'll just, maybe he'll just sleep through it. I, 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 I doubt that, and I think he's going to be much more upset if we just start doing random rituals on his shit uh, okay. with him. So, uh, can we assume that everyone else is like scattered throughout the room, not looking threatening at the guy, just like, the, wow, this place is cool. Can I pretend to be a crystal backpack? <laughs> I'll just be a crystal. I'll be a crystal backpack on Eric. Okay. Uh, if you all want to uh, move your tokens to where you're standing, that would be great. Okay, uh, Eric, you would also know that um, they do resist 30 cold as well as 30 fire. Uh, they do have some spellcasting ability. Um, and... Um, Their aura uh, is capable, or you can be affected by an aura from them. That depends upon uh, the cycle of the moon. Uh, you know, it can you can become calm, you can become enraged, or um, yeah, calm or enraged. <laughs> You know, okay. that, uh, you know that when he throws a rock, it creates a um, an impact crater where it lands. <laughs> okay. Um, I will casually lean against the stars to lie here. I'll, I'll lean on like my left shoulder so that my backpack of crystal isn't smashed flat against it. And everyone else is uh, looking around. And, you know, I'll say, uh, uh, good day, sir. What Might we trouble you for some questions about your wonderful place here? The rocks at him. Okay, um, uh, he, he's like, uh, what? I, I'm sleeping, leave me alone. Uh, are you a deep sleeper, sir? Or we were wanting to do some, you know, stargazing and stuff here. Can you sleep through that just fine? Uh, you all should leave before I get angry. Oh, sir, this is just a wonderful, fascinating place you have here. Couldn't you tell us a little bit about it? How often do you have visitors who are interested? Uh, why don't you make a, uh, diplomacy? Uh, 
he kind of softens. Oh, you're here to study the stars, are you? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I'm not the expert you are, but I can tell that these stars aren't of this star system. Where are they from? Uh, before he answers your question, you know, he's he's kind of testing you a little bit. So, uh, I, you know, you would have uh, made an arcana, arcana check. And you know that he... He is convinced that you know enough about the stars that you're not just bullshitting or wasting his time. So, you know, he kind of sits up and starts talking to you. And, and you know, uh, he says, see the star with the X? And that's your son, or our son. And Fascinating. From what perspective is this taken, though? Uh, from a different world. What is the name of this other world? And, uh, you know, he says the name Carsica and so forth. Carcosa. And... Let's see, um... And he's like, uh... You know, he, he talks about, um... Through your conversation, you learned that he arrived here about 30 years ago in order to gaze upon the star. And uh, he found that the location, this unique observatory, um, seemed to magnify, um, he hears these celestial voices, and they seem to magnify them, and um unfortunately he's at his end of his study because uh you know there are nagas that are custodians here and they charge him for exclusive access and you know he's pretty much run out of treasure to study the stars and you know um He Yeah, he, he feels that, you know, he was close to a breakthrough, but he requires just a few more months to conclude his observations. But, you know, uh <sighs> He, he's a little upset, and, you know, he talks about, um, the Nagas broke a contract with him, and, uh, they let, uh, this impudent scholar Laos in, and, um, You know, he's like, uh, I, I've told you enough. Uh, I really wish you'd leave because, you know, this is time that I paid for. And you're wasting my time. Well, if, how much are you paying them? Perhaps we could compensate you for like an hour of time. Well, he's like, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Last time around, I gave him 5,000 gold pieces. 
so what do you think could be fair for like an hour or so of the time? Uh, I don't know, probably 5,000 gold pieces. Because it's not about money, it's about access to this object. Well, why did the Nagas break their contract with you? How long was the original contract? Perhaps we could help negotiate your original contract back? Um... Yeah, the, the contract was that he pretty much had exclusive access. And the Nagas uh, evicted him for a while, which put him in a foul mood, uh, so that the scholar Count Laos could have access to the delay. And he has just recently gotten back inside. But it sounded, sir, like you said your the contract was running out soon, and you wanted to have enough time to finish your research. What 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 is that problem about? Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, you know, even with uh, the Nagas extending the contract, which they didn't, you know, I'm still on a time frame, and they let threw me out and let Laos in and kept my money and I don't have any more money to pay them for any more exclusive access. Well, perhaps we could talk to them and get them to extend the contract due to them treating you so rudely. One more time with that. Perhaps we could talk to the Nagas for you and convince them to extend the contract on, since they did treat you so rudely. Uh, well, yeah, if you, uh, want to deal with the Nagas on my behalf, or, you know, even kill the Nagas, so I can continue <laughs> studying. Wow. You're just cool with whatever, huh? <laughs> We'd be happy to talk to them for you. Where where might they be found? Uh, well, the, uh, they will be here come nightfall, no doubt. What time is it right now? Uh, you probably got about 34 hours. Wow, 34 hours? Shit. Okay, so I don't think it's likely we're going to do this and the other stars to lay today, correct? We're probably going to have to wait till tomorrow for the third one. Or, just start doing the stars to lay and say, ah, oh, this is why you need to kill time, to do random rituals. How far away is the other star delay from here, time-wise, the third one? Uh, give me a minute, and I will let you know on that one. That's the one in C. I did say there was three, did I not? Yeah, I recall you saying there were three stars to lie that had to be activated or attuned, yeah. So it's got to be in...
Okay, performing the ritual. I have not enjoyed the layout of this module at all. The Lost City's Ancient Three Stelays. Delay at the tower. I guess there's only two to worry about. Never mind, we're good. That's the junk. Ha ha ha! Found it! It's actually at the first tower. Did we miss it while we were there? I'm looking at the map. So it's where we were sick. before we set out was where the first one was. <gasps> this guy! Oh the big God. T on the map? Yeah, it, it's the big T on the map. Okay, that went... Yeah, um, A9 right there is the stelay. Okay. And, let's see... There's the camp. Ah, when when you left the A4 and went up to the camp and the plant room in A8, uh, uh, there's a side passage on the stairwell that was on the outside that takes you to A7. Uh -huh. Which doesn't have an exit. How the hell you get to that damn room? So, for uh, argument's sake, uh, shall we just say we activated it before you left the tower? Uh, I'm fine with that, unless someone else objects. Uh, yeah, there's not any truly major plot point there. Okay, I'll, I'll tell this giant fellow, by the way, I'm Eric, sir, might I have the pleasure of your name? Uh, yeah, he says it's Oka Shim. <laughs> well, Oka Shim, why don't Oka you, uh... <laughs> Oh, Kashem, why don't you return to your rest, and we'll speak with the Nagas when they arrive. Uh, won't you... well, you don't need to do another diplomacy with yours, um... Yeah, he's, um, 
he's like, you know, I, I'd appreciate that, and, you know, he's like, uh, I think I will go back to taking my nap, because it will be, uh, dark before long. And what are you going to do in the meantime? You gonna well, we can go outside and we can have a, a lovely get to know each other chat. Uh, including, sorry. I just went back. How do we? How do we dealing with the the first star slide? We are saying we arbitrarily went and activated it before. Oh, okay. Because we're just awesome like that. Great. Back. I just I just snapped my fingers and just casually glanced at it as we walked past. Boom! And activated. Yeah, didn't even that was and that was before we even <laughs> knew we needed to do it. Uh, and I, before we even found that they are quote unquote necessary ritual. Yeah, it's you actually do the ritual all the time. It's a fantasy equivalent of the fawns. He just clubs the jukebox and it starts humming, and eldritch rooms appear. <laughs> I like it, but yeah, there there's not any any reason plot wise or truly experience point wise to warrant going back that far okay so we'll sit outside and I'll say so this is an awkward question potentially but we uh, we saw that whole vision thing in the tower right where people kept like dying to the tentacle stuff and then coming to life and they were burning the bodies and we've been here for a few days so uh how's everyone feeling right now just 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 out of curiosity right fantastic i'm feeling fine i feel great is anyone required to make a bluff check on that uh, i would say stuff <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a tank, but it's not ours. It blew up. See? 16. I totally feel great. I see, I see. Your backpack doesn't oh. believe him. What, what do I make of a statement, Winter Mute? Um. Well, bluff check is um, opposed by sense motive, right? So make a sense motive check. That was a sense motive check. Yeah, he didn't want it. Oh, um, um, I have a different window open. I didn't see it. Sorry. Uh, you know that he's not being completely honest, but you're not really concerned at this point in time. Uh, am I, am I turning to colors or? Just, just uh, curious, like, at, w at what point? We, remember, we're talking about things that like can corrupt you by just like knowing about them and to some extent, right? Like that gradually destroys you over time and destroys your sanity and cranes you into a seedless husk of what you formerly were. So, at what point do we get worried about that sort of thing? Just, just, just for the record. Uh, right now, you. You just feel like something's up. Uh, you know, you know how you feel two days before you really get sick from the flu. You just feel off. But you don't no. feel you don't feel bad enough um, to be concerned with yet. You know, some just ain't right in your body. You're not sure what it is yet. So, but I mean, do I feel clammy, cold? I got uh, a fever. Do I have another ten? Do I have a tentacle growing out of me? What? Uh, no. Uh, you're you're not cold and clammy. Um, you just know something's not right, but you don't have any physical symptom as of yet. I'm here with you. Take ammo. All right. Well, you let me know if I need to start rolling up another character. Yeah. You. You know. You take two aspirin. You think you're going to be all right. <laughs> uh, no, no. 
And then you wake up in the next morning covered with blood and the entire party's dead. Right. <laughs> I think I'd wake up in a bathtub of ice. And listen to so I think the consensus is let's not leave Sith on watch alone right now. Is th is that is that the in-game consensus or the meta-game consensus? <laughs> Maybe both, given what the, we know about some of this crazy shit. Well, give it well. What what's your basis for set for what's your character's basis for assuming that we that we shouldn't leave uh if is feeling alone. Sick, he should be getting either A as much rest as possible or B somebody should be there in case he gets further sick and starts like throwing up or something when bad guys are approaching. I mean, do you want him to be vomiting all over us from sickness when he needs to be warning us? I don't. Well that's fair, but he said he was fine. And you clearly you're uh, Eric clearly doesn't feel that concerned about it. Here's the thing. In this place, that concerned really means any concern. <laughs> we are maximally paranoid here. If he's like, you know what? I woke up this morning and I thought I might be left-handed for a second. We're like, oh god, something's wrong with you. Let's not make fun That's of the lefties. Fair. They have it hard enough being so weird. <laughs> okay, so you've decided that you need to probably keep an eye on stuff over the next few days. Okay. Hmm, perhaps we talk about random shit if anyone has any other in-character questions, whatever they're wanting to ask. Though presumably we've been traveling across the desert for like weeks at this point, so probably most of it has been discussed at this point. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to do? Like maybe try to activate this delay before the Nagas get here? Do we want to activate this delay? No. We're, we're going to try to handle this diplomas diplomatically, try to convince the lunar Nagas or Nagas or whatever the hell they are, because this is like moon shit, right? So are they lunar? Is that what they'd be called? Or there's normal lot Nagas, because there's a bunch of different types of Nagas. Uh, give me just a second to close down all these character windows I have open. Okay, um, yeah, they, they would be lunar. Alright, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to talk to them. And we'll, we'll see whether they are grievance or the giant's grievance seems more legitimate if we're going to need to kill one or the other. I mean, there's only one here. Okay. Um... Sanctuary, throw them on the tracker. And do you all want to be outside or inside when night hits? Hello? lose you? I can hear you now. Uh, we said we were going to be hanging outside and just, you know, setting up, you know, s'mores, obviously, playing cards, leaving the giant to sleep, so hopefully he's in a better mood if we need to wake him up again. Okay, you're hanging out. And 
from behind you on the other set of stairs I uh, you can hear noises as if uh, someone is <laughs> climbing the stairs slithering up the stairs you hear chattering amongst the Nagas <laughs> okay um, I'm not trying to be racist here okay but or handest but if they don't have arms, how do they cast spells with somatic components? Their tongues. Maybe they wiggle their do, ears. Do somatic components require arms specifically? They require something you can use to, to manipulate things. That's why you can't do it. Like if you are, are uh, if you're bound, right? You can't do it successfully. You can only do something verbally. Uh, that would be a good question for the forums. <laughs> okay, okay. Just, just He'll make his 500th post about it. <laughs> He's that being Okay, right so now. apparently you're saying we picked the, the wrong side to be on. Okay, um... So anyway, yes, uh, one of them slides in and sees the giant and, you know, hisses a greeting at the giant and the giant says, you know, uh, we have other company. All right, we'll walk up the stairs and just casually hang out over there, you know. Ah, yes, we do indeed have visitors. Welcome! Yes, she... well, thank you. I'm Eric. These are my companions. Who, who do we have the honor of addressing? Uh, I am Titius. Tis his. <laughs> And she's like, uh, what are you all doing here? Well, we stopped by earlier and spoke with Okushim, and, uh, un unfortunately, he he's concerned about the the contract he negotiated with you and feels he hasn't quite got, gotten, you know, the, his fair share of it, and was hoping that maybe we could arbitrate as a, a neutral third party and discuss the matter and see if we could make everyone happy. And what's in it for you? Oh, we just want to spend some time here. This is a fascinating observatory. Apparently this is from Corcosa, viewing on our own star, and maybe run some little experiments here of our own. What experiments? Does it matter? As long as we don't harm anything? Yeah, it might matter. Oh, well, we're interested in the star still I. We wanted to investigate it further. And... How do you know of the Stelai? We found uh, several other of them back of several continents ago. We've been roaming the world and found this lost city. We've been investigating all sorts of stuff like this. Uh, yeah, you want to try a bluff? <laughs> You seem to be very concerned with the Star Still I may ask why? Uh, we are the guardians of the Still I. Um, 
We were called here by some force and we found that the sky was perfect for stargazing and each night the stars sang to us and it was more beautiful than the previous night and you know we sang back and we promised to honor the sacred place as long as we live um, And we under uh, the the other one appeared, and sorry for the giant, but he took priority. You speak of Count Laos, I assume. You know the name. We do. Yes, he he come to us not long ago, and. Uh, We, I, I didn't like him, and so, you know, we challenged him trying to run him off, and, uh, you know, he invited us to tell his future, and we divined that his actions would herald a great change to the heaven, and taking this as a sign... You know, uh, Lyle's got priority to run his ritual. I'm not sure whether you think that was a good thing or a bad thing. You, this whole topic, if, you, if I may be so rude and saying so, it does seem to have you worked up a bit. What, what upset you so? Uh, we just didn't care for the man. We thought he was shady. Well, that he certainly is. What if we said that we would attempt to uh, stop him, put an end to his shadiness? The reason we helped him was because it was a sign from above that he would herald great change. Good change or bad change? That really depends on your point of view now, doesn't it? Well, that would be why I'm asking yours. Uh... We figured it would be a good change. Well, look at it this way, if it's any comfort, then. If that's what the stars have foretold, then nothing we could do possibly would matter, right? Because the stars have foretold the change already. Uh, the stars only tell of actions that will be... Um you know... Um the sign told us we should do it. It is not ours to question the uh, morals or objectives of anyone's plan. Nor did I say you should, but did the stars say anything about us? And no, they did not. So, therefore, what could we do that would matter? If, if, if doing something to us over if we were going to cause problems then surely the stars would have told you yes so you have nothing to worry about uh, I thought you were here to talk about his um, contract with us well certainly but we came here originally the, the whole city itself uh, in chase of Laos and just tried to find him we used to work for him you see but, yes, you're correct. Uh, I mean, if I understand it, uh, Olko Shem has been here for a few years on doing his studies, correct? Uh, that is correct, and he has paid. 
All right. Well, given that you did displace him for allowance and, and interrupted his research, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have displaced him, because if that's what the star said, that's what the star said, but don't you think it would be fair to allow him some extra time to make up for the disruption in his studies? Lyle's was special case, we were told. I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, uh, the giant... Uh, the giant lost out, but that's just the way that it works. Did the star say the giant wasn't supposed to be able to continue his research? The star said, help Lao's. And you did. So what is the issue with letting Nokashim finish his research then? Wouldn't that be fair to do? Uh, well, you know, for the right amount of money, we could be persuaded to let that happen. How much more would you need? I mean, given in mind that he's already paid for several years, how much more would it cost for a few extra months? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd say 2000 in gold. That seems awfully steep for uh, such a minor increase. You're asking for months. But if it was 5000 for years... No, his most recent payment was five grand. Ah, and how long was that for? Uh, let's say four months. Out of character, does these seem like reasonable rates, or does it seem like they're completely ripping him off? Well, uh, they are the guardians of uh, this delay, and, you know, they know it's worth, and they know he wants to, you know, it's a seller's market. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this is also a killer's market, given the, the, the locale. So, is the amount they're charging him, does that seem something that's, like, fair on a reasonable level, or does it seem like they're taking advantage of him and gouging him? Uh, for what it is, uh, it, it seems fairly reasonable. Might be a tad high, but it's not absorbent. And, you know, he is asking for exclusive access. So the question is, do you want to cough up the money? I'm checking stuff in the party inventory right now. I'll say, well, given that uh, there isn't exactly a thriving market here that I know of, would you take magical items in exchange instead? Ah, uh, yes, they would. Of the appropriate dollar value. So, for example, uh, what if we gave them the plus one agile breastplate and the masterwork short sword and tossed in like a hundred gold uh, just uh, for, you know, grins on top of that. And that would be a little over 2,000, I think. Or about 2,000. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, that will work. Uh, we will gladly uh, extend his contract by uh, two months. Will that be enough time, Okushin? Uh, uh, absolutely. That should be plenty for me to reach my conclusions. All right, well, uh, then we'll just give you those items, and then we'll retire for the evening, and uh, Okushin, we will visit you tomorrow, if that's all right, during the day when you're d not doing your research. 
Ah, uh, yes, uh, that that sounds great. Thank you, thank you. You're most kind. I'm happy to help a fellow scholar. Thank you, but now get the fuck out so I can get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'll subtract a hundred gold from my care. And then you can remove those two items from the party inventory, and then presumably we go and we rest. And then we come back in the morning once the Nagas are gone, so we don't upset them. What am I taking out? The Agile Breastplate at the top and the Master of Short Sword about two-thirds of the way down. All right. And one long rest. And can I get everyone to make a will save? No, will, you will, can't. Will, will, will save. Oh, wow. Look at my will save. Wait, wait, wait. Did we rest all night? Yep. Now, it, is it, what kind of will save is this? No. I would have recast hair whistle for myself. Is this as we're waking up, or what? When is this will save being made? Uh, you know, if you, uh, if you're gonna cast a spell, uh, I'll let you do it before the long rest, so you can get your bonuses for the will save. Oh, so this is before we go to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Wow. And what kind of will save? So everyone has a plus two on that from heroism, then. And, uh, what kind of will save is it? Is it mind affecting? Uh, yes, it is mind affecting. Okay, I'm going to use my trait, Methodical Mind, and reroll that. Twenty-three instead. Yes, I got technically a twenty-three also. Who said that? Uh Ah, uh, Rita. Rita has okay. a 23, Eric has a 23, Poppy has a 30, Rook has a 14, Steph has a 16. Okay, and I already gave you the overnight rest, so everything's back. Okay, and it is now morning. You do not see the Nagas. Uh, the giant is uh, whistling happy while he's working. Good morning, Okashim. How are you doing? Hi, ah, good morning. It was a productive night. I got lots well, of accomplished. I, I, I really appreciate it. Well, not a problem. Perhaps once you're done with the, your research, uh, we could arrange for me to get a copy, if that's all right, so I could read it. I'd be very interested. Ah, uh, yes. I'll make sure you get a copy of my published paper. Fantastic. For a fee, of course. Paywall. Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe a reviewer, you know, checking his methodology. Uh, no, I think it's, there's, a, it, there's a paywall. Yeah, paywall for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you might find a copy on the dark web. <laughs> uh, That's all I'm here now. <laughs> so, did you all have a good night? Yes. It was peaceful, which is about as much as you can hope for in this place, I think. Uh, absolutely. I really appreciate what you did for me with the Nagas. It means a lot, and I'll even list you in the bi bibliography of my uh, paper. 
Wow, that, that's that's going above and beyond, sir. I appreciate the gesture. Uh, you have allowed me to hopefully conclude my research without paying these snake women any more money. They have Do they, they seem awfully upset about the star still? Do you know why it concerns them so much? You know, uh, really, I, I don't know much about this delay at all. I'm just here studying the star patterns and whatnot, and uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, ever since Lyle's showed up, uh, they, they've been on edge and, you know, just uh, very protective and not really themselves. Not that they were ever cheerful, friendly people, but... I understand. Maybe it's just that time of the lunar cycle. Great. Well, do you mind if we do some investigation of the star still I then? We'll keep out of your way. Oh, no, 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 not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, I want to go find me a nice piece of shade and take a nap. I've been up all night. I hope it was productive, sir. Oh, it was very productive. And away he goes. We clearly go kill him then. I like to lure them into a false sense of security. Is that how this works? Before I murder them. I really That would be awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. The thing that get better is if you were a paladin. Yeah. Well, so paladin, that's what lawful good paladin, right? Yeah. That's the law that's the law they follow. Alright, so I'll use my mnemonic vestments and I'll ask Rita to cast guidance on me. You are handed one guidance token. Fantastic. So then we try to make the spellcraft check, which we succeed on. We auto succeed on the other two check. And presumably half an hour later, the Star Stelai is activated. Okay, uh. During. Uh, the ritual. Or, you know, actually, let's say it's uh, during the completion of it. Uh, no, we're already past that. Went to me for past it. Just let's just move on. Then Is that gonna don't, work? Don't look back. <laughs> Nothing to see here. You gotta stop living living in the past, went to me. Just gotta go forward. Uh, yeah, we are going forward. <laughs> Um, you see one of the Nagas that appear at the top of the stairs, and it's like, What are you doing? Stop! Am I able to stop without, like, restarting the entire ritual? Uh, you know, uh, let, let's say you're in the final hand motion of the ritual. You know, you just gotta... Flick your pinky out, and it's done. <laughs> flick the pinky. Flick the I'm pinky. gonna flick the pinky. Do it. Do it. Uh, and she yells, "What have you done?" Relax. We, we don't know. That's the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think we've done? Like, what harm has this done? Booyah. Uh, you have cast a spell on the stelay. There's still one active. And, you know, the stelay starts humming and doing its uh, magical energies and so forth. And Isn't that a good thing? I'm sorry? Isn't that a good thing, I ask her? Um, you weren't supposed to cast any spells. Why are you still here? The deal was for him to, uh, for the giant to study, not for you all to remain. And now you have cast spells without our permission. And well, we didn't defend. Or is, is she attacking? You know, she... Ga Gaslighter. She, she turns her head and hisses like a snake-like language down the stairs. And... Well, that can't be good. Yeah, she's turning to 
start attacking and let's roll for initiatives. Justin Bieber going down. Just Man, knock them I'm down. I'm wasting all my 20s on this shit. I'll, I'll, I'll call it just knock them out. They're not in their right minds right now. You sure? Do I have any particular reason to believe that these are evil creatures overall, or are they probably just misguided right now? Um... I... You know that gener generally they're chaotic, but, uh... They're, they're more neutral than evil. But, uh... You have pissed them off by casting a spell without their permission. Chaotic, chaotic neutral is just evil light. Obviously what they should have done is had someone here watching, you know, and they could have told us not to do it at the start. It's their own fault. That's awesome. Alright, Rampage. Hey, hey, I actually got... I, I don't have sound turned on. I grabbed an Archer file for you. <laughs> Instructions weren't, weren't clear being a stuck in blender. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to hold my action, and I mean, I don't really have any sort of. Oh, hold on just a second. Yeah. Um, I got the. Uh, 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 I'm going to. I'm actually going to cast Greater Invisibility on myself. And they're like, wow, where did he go? Out of curiosity, why do I have initiative effects minus two? Oh, well, because you're grappled still according to the combat tracker. So really uh, you're at 22. He actually still has that claw on him. <laughs> still just wrapped around him. <laughs> He's been walking around. No one, you know, no one has to remove it. So he's like, it feels right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I was told by Eric to be non-lethal. Yeah. I, that is what I said. Um, are these guys in their favorite terrain currently? And by favorite, he means native. Uh, yeah, hold on just a second. I need to roll their initiatives. <laughs> that might be useful. And yeah, it didn't. Okay, you're still up. <laughs> okay, I will dimensional dervish over there and attack non lethally. So that's a minus four, correct? Uh, as you go to cast the dimension door, it fizzles. You are not able to dimension door. Do I observe this happening? Uh, no, because he's kind of behind you. I'm facing everywhere. There is no facing in Pathfinder. Yeah. Would I have any, why, would I have any idea why it fizzled? Uh, short of a magical effect in place, uh, that would be, you know, that's pretty much what you're thinking. Let me double check the rules on that. And just to be clear, this is a spell like ability, it's not me casting a spell. Sanctuary. Where'd my web browser go? Um yeah, th there is a... Forbidden 
spell that's been cast over the area that uh, prevents uh, all planar travel into or within it and it does include uh, dimension door teleport plane shifting astral travel ethereal travel and all summoning spells Uh, the spell-like ability is full round. No, nope, it's a feat that lets me, as a swift action, dimensional door to full attack. So, can I just not do anything? I'm stuck full attacking? Like, what? Uh, uh yeah. Uh, you tried to cast the spell, nothing happened, so you're free to do whatever else you can now. And you're preparing an action? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Alright, Poppy! Oh boy! I guess I'll double move to there and see if I can whack her in the head. Okay. Non-lethally, I guess. I don't have damage set up for non-lethal, though. Power, yeah, okay. You mean whacking her if she did provokes an attack of opportunity? can't attack right now though, right, is the point. Oh. Yeah, doing a double move. I, I, I didn't want to ask again, so I just like... 50-50, <laughs> I'm either right or I'm not. Oh, fair enough. I have a non-lethal effect set up if it becomes relevant though, so I'll drop that on you. Uh, I'm okay. going to make that and uh, attack with the weapon, damage with the spell as a screensaver or a background. <laughs> Okay, so Poppy's done. Ryder. lose you all again. No, my mic went messing <laughs> up. I don't know. It, there's this thing where a Discord doesn't like if I mute my mic. Anyways, um, Wild Shape, which I just missed to not go off for some Already existed. I don't have it on me. What? Oh. Okay. Yeah, and then I move. That's it. Okay, and... 
you can see another one that slides over and starts to come up the stairs. Uh, there's another one that slithers quickly up the east stairs and it's gonna try and bite Rida. Rida moves out of the way. Eric. All right, I am going to move up to here, I guess. And I will say, we really don't want to have to fight you. Can we please talk about this? But I, because I'm not expecting them to answer, I'm going to cast a spell and start singing about how this is really stupid to be fighting, and when it be better to discuss this like reasonable creatures? Um... Would you prefer good hope or haste? No. To everyone. Do you want two attack and two damage? Do you want haste? Either's fine to me. Okay, haste it is. Um, I can start swinging as a swift action. Alright. Okay, number six is going to try and bite Poppy. Poppy avoids the attack. And she's going to slither around Poppy. So does that provoke from Poppy? Stand in her threat range. Yeah, I mean, moving within her threat range, unless she has some ability to avoid her an attack of opportunity, she would provoke. Uh, yeah, go ahead and take your attack there, Poppy. Now that I play that. Rampage! Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I can do that's not going to kill him. I don't really have a non-lethal attack, uh, you know, so... You can see. hit the one who's already hit with non-lethal damage, it's unlikely you'll kill her. That was number six? Uh-huh. So I'm going to take a five foot step so I can get a better beat. Oh, no. You're just going to do a seven and a half foot step. Something like that. There we go. Uh, okay, hold on here. Select. Uh, I will use uh, arrow. Um, let me see if I still got, uh, I do have a rapid shot, uh, I need to take off point blank shot. Okay, so I can shoot it three times.
So how many times did I hit it? Uh, all three times. All three times? Also, okay. Uh, oh, you're shooting with your bow. Okay. Now hold down shift for this. So hang on. I, you're shooting with your bow. That changes something. Um, uh, here, went to me. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. God damn it. Went to me. Can you add 10 non lethal damage back onto her? Yep, I sure can. Okay, so I'm un. Okay, add 10 non lethal damage onto her, then add 13 lethal damage. I because Seth would be uh, affected by Inspire Courage at that point, so you should have taken a total of twenty six non lethal and then thirteen lethal. Got it. All right, then Seth, you hold down Shift because your next shot would crit. And then uh, do one third other shot. You're out, out of range, but well, my discordant voice, but. Invisible arrows. Okay, I think that's sufficient. Rock. All right, let's see. I'll take a five foot step there. Get mad. And you said that these were affected by the favorite train? Uh, is, is, is this their native terrain? Yeah, this would not be their native terrain. Attacking non lethally with any strike? No, I'm not non lethally. You still have another rapier attack? Alright, oh, haste. He's not used to the haste pulls. Good hit. Alright, Poppy, show them how it's done. Uh, do I still have the non lethal? Yes, I do. Okay. You could probably just make the first attack with non lethal safely, and then you could switch to lethal attacks if you wanted. Do you want to switch to lethal damage further to improve your accuracy, or do you want to keep going non-lethally? Um, yeah, I'll switch to lethal. All right. Rolls a one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I have haste, so I get another attack. 
wasn't was oh you were so you did twenty two wait what this is weird hang on what so your first attack was at twenty six right yeah how was your next attack at twenty five I guess it would be yeah how is that how does that work I don't know. It should have been at 21. Did you type in minus 4 on your modifier? Yeah. Oh, you didn't need to do that. It was already fine. You, you got double penalized right there. Okay, so you had even with the, the double minus 8 on your attack. Okay, so that, was your, that would have been 30, then 25, then 20, and yes, you have another 30. K.O. I like that. I hadn't saw that one yet. <laughs> um. I guess I'm not lethaling, so minus four. Do you really just give you the effect? I, I don't want to attack, so I don't think it's necessary. But is your damage type going to be non lethal? No. So, yeah. Okay, there you go. Crystal smash. Crystal miss. Crystal miss. Boo. Did you vital strike on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I, mean, I don't. I don't. It doesn't matter. I don't have another attack, anyways. I guess I could have. Could have flirted you, you haste. Oh, yeah, true. That's fine. Do you want to take your hasted attack? Oh, I strike. I vital strike, so I oh. can't. Okay, 17 moves up and tries to bite Poppy. Does indeed get a hit, and... You want to make a uh, fortitude save there, Poppy? And Possibly. You are not poisoned. <laughs> and let's see. Seventeen's gonna bite the monkey. It's gonna miss the monkey. Eric. Alright, I will continue singing and take a five foot step down this way. Hang on a second. You said, did you say they have fast healing? Uh, yes. God damn it, we need to knock them out a lot more. <laughs> well, that doesn't really do much for us, knocking them out better. They're still gonna get back up, right? Well, I mean, if you, if you not, let's say you do 100 non-lethal damage to them, right? It'll take them 20 rounds to regain consciousness. Or something like that, so. Well, what you're saying is we all just get around this one Naga and just beat the ever-living shit out of an unconscious woman. Well, what, what, once, <laughs> you can't beat like the it. shit out of her. Eventually it starts turning into lethal damage when she's at her cap for non-lethal damage. So. Just most of the shit out of her. Apparently. Damn, that was meant to happen. Oh, I can't target her on the board now anymore because she is knocked unconscious. That is annoying. Uh, I yeah, wish, with, wish with, with this <laughs> one, when they uh, go unconscious or dying or dead, it moves them down to the middle layer. That way you can move your token on top of them and not have the token selecting problem. Gotcha. I'm just going to stay right there. Nice. And 
and I'm not hasted, so... I'll take that. I forget, was his, is his, like you just cast it regularly, or was it part of the area effect of your song? I cast it regularly. I did a move action to move a standard action to cast the spell and a swift action to start the song. Oh, okay, never mind. Jay, Ruck, you're up. Poppy, can you finish her? Are you attacking lethally or non lethally? Um he did, he did um lethal damage to Naga seventeen. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck it then I'll do non lethal. Alright. Do you have make sure you have flanking on? I can do that effect if you want, or you can do it yourself if you have it. Um, I just stuck Busto in the modifier box. Yeah. So since we have 500 feet of rope now, I assume that uh, we can actually get the highest uh, CMB bonus, who is probably Poppy. We can get Poppy to tie up the nogs with the rope, like bend them in half, basically, right? So they can't, like, slither around before they regain consciousness. Uh, yeah, you sure can. Okay, so we're down to seven pieces of rope right now, if you want to adjust that. <laughs> and we have three tied up Nagas. And... Hold on, hold on. How do you tie up? You take their tail, you put it to where their head is, and you tie them like that, so they're like bent in half as a snake. And they can't like maneuver around easily. You're awful. You could also just tie them back to back. You could, but I had an idea to try, I think, at a minimum, given the <laughs> hazards we went to here, we deserve a little re recompensation for them attacking us. Absolutely. BRB. So, I lose so, them. I don't think they have anything on them, but what I was going to suggest we do is we move two of them out of sight, 
and we told the third one that we killed the other two and she that because they didn't cooperate and she's next if she doesn't tell us where some of the treasures are all the treasures are and i will take you know what's a fair recompensation for their hostility but not all of it also we finished the we finished the Star Salai thing. What was the next step? Maybe there's another, like the Black Star's Beckon or something like that. Um, there's another ritual thing, yeah, that apparently takes us to Carcosa. Oh. Uh, yes, that is correct. And uh, you managed to uh, carefully tie up uh, all three Nagas. And what we do, since no one objected to the idea, is we take two of them and we separate them. We, we separate all three, basically. Drag two of them away, like one to the east, one to the west, leave the last one here. And then when, you know, the, the third one here wakes up, and we say, you know, we hope that she'll be more cooperative than the other two. We had to kill them because they wouldn't help. Oh my god, you're vicious. <laughs> you know, hold, hold up, hold up. I, I kind of feel like stealing their shit would be a bad idea since we did just pay them for the for this giant to get extra time in this place. So th th that is why I was suggesting we not rug rob them blind, but we take back basically what we would be owed from them trying to kill us. Unless you don't think that we should take anything. How much? How much is them attacking us worth? Everything they have. I don't think yeah, we should yeah, take anything. See? We shouldn't take anything. No, we should take everything. Well, keep in mind that at some point the giant's going to come back, and is he an ally of theirs? Or is he an ally of ours? And we're going to have to kill the giant too. The uh, giant, as far as I can tell, does not like them one bit. Yeah, I think he'll be fine with this situation. Will he be fine with it if they kick him out? Are they going to kick them out? They're currently tied up. Uh, assuming they won't be tied up for the rest of their lives. <laughs> uh, that All is right. a possibility. Well, we can just kill them. Well, so while you all have that discussion, um, I know you all hate to hear these words, but uh, welcome to 14th level. Oh boy. Okay. So that would be Sith and Poppy voting to not take anything from them, and Rita and Rock want to take everything from them, and I was potentially. I'm actually, I'm middle. actually completely indifferent. Okay. Don't. Not what I'm here for. I don't really care. I guess technically speaking, we didn't have to spend any money to defeat them. So if you guys don't even want, to... you're even well, nicer than I. Well, if time is money, I mean, we did spend money. If you're, if you... the only reason I'm considering anything is like I'm cap tempted to take back what we paid them since they did attack us, but. I'm willing to forego that, Poppy and Steph, if you think it'd be better to just leave things as they are. I wish at least take back what we gave them. Because, you know, the, they were mad at you all for casting the spell. Yeah, well, they should get upset. Yeah, they should talk to us. This like is a free, this is a free city. Uh, oh good, you have the basic rules here, that's great. Monk 5. Monk 5, guys! I am now immune to fatigue. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, what are you going to decide to do? You robbing them or not? Punch him. Uh, since apparently Sith, you know, when Poppy and Sith have become the angels on my shoulder, you know things are messed up. So, fine, we'll leave things be and let this just be a misunderstanding. No serious harm to long term harm done. Well, 
Okay, and you know, the, uh, afterwards, you know, the giant returns and, you know, uh, yeah, he'll cut him loose after you all leave and yada yada yada. <laughs> does he think it's funny? Uh, yes, he does, and, you know, he's going to barter for uh, more time before he unties him. <laughs> Brilliant. I like his style. Yeah, he's uh, quite pissed off over uh, Count Lau's uh, getting priority access over him. You know what? I agree with him. That's that's kind of rude. Rude. Yeah. Oh, I don't get the motor speed upgrade until six. Damn. Oh well. And stuff, you're not here next week, right? Right. Next week I'm running uh, uh, Savage Tide in the real world. Wow. Real world. What? You mean there is a real world? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Well, I am. I mean, good. we're in the real world right now, right? Because we're not in the dreamlands. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? So his character is running a Pathfinder game in world. Yeah. That's very meta. Yeah. Well, it's like it's, Russian dolls. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> fourth wall break in fourth wall. Uh, that would be in a fantasy grounds module. Here, playing an RPG of your characters playing an RPG. <laughs> Right. So, uh, run something simple like a uh, dungeon crawl or. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any uh, feet suggestions? Penetrating strike, greater weapon specialization. If you have both of those, I probably you have improved probably better greater strike. Yeah. Or get a third yeah. foot, and you can go an extra ten feet. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have penetrating strike and greater yeah. weapon focus. Is there a what better one? What about greater weapon specialization? I have yeah, yeah. that one too. I mean, at that point, I mean, you don't get another fighter-specific feat till 16 with greater penetrating strike, so... I mean, it depends on what your character wants to do. You, I don't know if you have step-up, disruptive, um, critical feats, no, I have but... I have disruptive, and I have improved critical. Do you have step-up? Uh, no. But how often, not... how often do people withdraw from me? If there's an archer... For example, I mean it's up to you. But I remember when we had that stupid uh, the div back in the the slave city who five foot stepped back and cast like dimension doors to move around on. But if you can come up with something better, go for it. I'm just to also tossing out ideas. Yeah, step up can be handy. Yeah, it's great. I'll go with that. Well, my level up was. I just named a monk. And you literally get nothing at five for monk, so. <laughs> well, I get the fatigue thing, but I don't like. My AB doesn't go up. None of my saves go up. Um. I guess I get high jump. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, I'm doing lots of jumping going on. Uh. <laughs> don't. Hold on, let me scroll through my 800 class abilities. Uh, well, I can only, and I can only use the first half because I gave up my key pool. So, 
Actually, I could take Steadfast Slayer. I don't even know what that does. If I'm the only character threatening an opponent and I successfully attack the opponent with a two-handed melee weapon for each size category larger than me, I get a plus two bonus on, on melee damage. And I'm small, and we have been fighting rather large creatures as of late. Just keep in mind that you have at least four, uh, three other melee characters right now, not counting a dolly and his pet, so that might not happen as much as you'd like. That is true. If this was a party of like an archer, a uh, wizard, a cleric, and you, that would be a lot better. <laughs> not all melee, all the time. <laughs> We really like to get up close and personal and beat the uh, beat the monsters up. Yeah, yeah, we do. sure what to do with a fourth versatile performance. I need to think about that. <laughs> I have all the ones I really care about, I think. I need to check. And I need to figure out another fifth level spell. A lot of them seem underwhelming compared to earlier ones, frankly. Bard fifth levels? Yeah. Let's look at what Bard's got for fifth levels. Uh... I'll be right back. Go up to six level bench. I guess. And, and again, part of it is all. I mean, I guess there's some things like bladed dash greater, which allow me to potentially attack multiple times. I'll scroll on your incredibly long list. What is this from? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bards escape! Obviously, not one of our books, but... It's a bestiary spell? Interesting. Uh, confidence call mass. I don't know. I, I, how is your casting stat? Do you not try to cast? It's a four, so, I mean, you'd be looking at DC 19 will save. That's not that amazing. Yeah, no, okay, so you want to keep keep them on the... Yeah, they're... Yeah, we're four. looking for more, like, buffs or other stuff. Yeah, like, right now what I have, I have stunning finale and um, good dispel magic greater. I'm looking potentially at bladed dash greater if there's for some reason where we really have a bunch of enemies. Oh, we man. Well, yeah, okay. Won't dispel magic suffer from the same problem as your casting stat? No, dispel magic doesn't use your casting stat. 
Oh, just your caster level? Mm hmm. Okay. I'm back, by the way. Heroism oh, Greater is nice, but it's also only a minute per level, is the problem. Yeah, it's supposed to be that more powerful, like, combat. Yeah. The problem, that's what, yeah. Isn't it double? The double the yeah, power? Yeah, plus four. I mean, the whole point is, her, here it's nice, you don't really get, there's something else that gives you those type of bonuses. I mean, I can go and get those kind of bonuses from uh, Dance of a Hundred Cuts, but I know what you mean for other people. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these would require you to have a uh, good casting set. Or they're just not that useful in a lot of cases, especially in this type of campaign. Yeah. Like persistent in. How many times am I going to be leaving a persistent image around? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe it really comes down to the ones you talked about. That's because I'm looking at this list, and I would say, yeah, that's basically it. Crime Wave. What book is this from? Ultimate Intrigue, of course, it is. Oh, everyone's favorite spell, Crime Wave. Wait, you don't love that spell? I've never heard of that spell. It's a spell that forces people to commit crimes. <laughs> such <laughs> as murder, attempted to break or destroy or deface nearby unattended ma manufactured objects or structures, or attempt to steal or sleight of hand valuable objects from nearby creatures. Or they'll act normally, but are suspicious towards other. Yeah, and what's the area of effect? It is one creature per level, no more of two which need to be 30 feet apart. It lasts a round per level, and you it's a little five bard, and then seven for full casters. So uh, it's like a late, it's like late game spell. It's a shame you really can't increase the area, because you could go back to the slave city and have <laughs> everyone kill everyone. <laughs> well, you could do Gotham. Yeah, just make it Gotham, obviously. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing. So I do not get Shield Other, but I do get Unwilling Shield, which is Shield Other, but you can use it on a hostile target. Now, a hostile target is likely to succeed on their save. Ah, shit, it costs 250 gold to cast each time. I don't know if that's worth it, then. Yeah, no. Well, well, maybe. I could give it to but. an ally, though, is the point, and split the damage with them if, if I think enemies are going to target me. But I'm not sure it's worth yeah. 250 gold per cast for that. Because I'd be better off just retreating. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're better with some of these other spells. I'm going to go with Greater Heroism for it now, but I may, may change my mind. I'll think about it more. It's that spell, and you really need that extra plus two to hit. It's basically, it's more, yeah, more it's saying if, if it's, especially something short term, if I'm, if I'm buffing, if we're buffing up before a major fight, instead of casting heroism on everyone, I cast greater heroism on somebody in particular. But of course, it means the good hope bonus isn't as relevant, right? Good hope's like an AoE heroism normally, but it's not as good as heroism greater, so the whole thing is just... Yeah. Let's not forget the most important part. Uh, it's 14 temporary hit points as well. Yeah, obviously.
And it's only get two level five spells per day, right? So it's not exactly that impressive overall. But right now we have stunning finale because if they fail, then they're stunned, which is great. But if they succeed, they're still staggered for a round. So I can do something like star if they're if we're facing like a dragon or something, right? Um, I can start my performance, stunning finale, and guarantee that it's staggered even if they succeed for the round and can't full attack and stuff. Yeah. Oh, hold on, Cop, you need to download this, this add-on, I really like it. The KO thing? No, well, it's, it's part, that's part of it, but no, the fact that, like, all the other features it has, at least. The you know, so they, they, they seem to have taken my whole 25% thing and incorporated that as well, with different terms, light, moderate, heavy, critical. Yeah. But mine well, came from everyone tonight, so therefore the terms were better. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Just want to make sure we're clear on this. Well, whenever Winter Nights three comes out, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, this um, plugin is uh, really cool. Let's see. Yeah, it has a lot of good features. The fact that I can sl cl click on people, it, it goes to them for me on the combat tracker, so I can see them really quickly. Uh, no kidding. Uh, um. So obviously, I get why you did the green square around them. I wish it was slightly smaller. It's a little too big for my personal taste. Um, I do like the thing where, you know, they said they'd become on a different layer, so you don't select them accidentally. Uh, yeah, and when you uh, change them back to being alive, um, they do go back up to the top level, and I'm not hating the layers as much this time as the original plug-in and uh... let's see... let me... go down to here... and... target... and if you bring back up the snarl map I'm going to cast a uh, trigger reflex saves. The hell I think. Oh, I see. And he did the little icons better. Which I haven't even noticed. You don't have those activated? I guess you just don't have, like, you don't have the tiny icons actually on our things on. Uh, but that's fine. Because you have the hover over, which is all I care about, so I can actually see it much easier. The tiny icons are nice, however, this is Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, I know, it works better in, in 5e where you have two or three, maybe. And let's see, where is that? Show allied effects. Off. That's the tool tip. Oh, I don't want health, I want effects. Oh, interesting. So putting blind on someone twice removes blind. When you get, yeah. Uh, if they already have the effect applied and you reapply it. Uh, the bigger icons are nice until you get into, you know, five, six, nine effects. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look at how many I have right now. This is not even anywhere near as many as I normally have. Now, the uh, one thing that took me a little while to get used to, um, <clears throat> you can separate, uh, like, the Naga there. I can um, leave the token on the map, but remove the combat tracker entry. So you don't have to, uh, you know, when you want to, when that character comes out of battle and it's no longer a threat and it's going to be, you know, just a PC character, but you don't want the combat tracker entry, that's handy. Uh, locking tokens. Oh, save indicators. Yeah, uh, when you lock tokens, uh, you no longer have the radial menu to accept the move 
you've got to click the middle or the mouse wheel in order to accept it. Yeah, okay. This is like a ton of stuff. It was very good. Now, the one concern I have, though, from according to the thread I looked at, the author basically said every single update it'll break. Uh, we'll find I'm out. I'm guessing <laughs> if an update affects too much, but yeah, there's a no, lot of stuff going on there. If any update is made, it immediately breaks. Great. Well, they've been updating a lot, too, so I guess it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it says, as an aside, it is release locked to expire once FG advances beyond 3.3.6, so the extension won't be available to new versions without an update. So basically, it's, a lot, it's meant to say, as soon as you go past that, it breaks. Interesting. The idea is that that way it doesn't screw up other features, but I, I basically don't want to get into the situation where we're reliant on having the add-on, and then, you know, we have to go several sessions without it, and now everyone's like, oh, what do we do? <laughs> ah, I see. You don't even have it. You'd rather not even have it part of the time and you won't have it other time. That's Got my it. concern, yes. Yeah, I get it. It makes sense that they're doing this, probably, as you said. It really it really depends on how active he is. Now, if he gets to the and point where he says, well, update, yeah. he's like, well, I don't really want to keep the doing this anymore. He could just be like, remove the explanation on it so it just kind of goes. Uh, um, and if it breaks, it breaks. Actually, he did uh, GPL the entire thing right off the bat. So as long as you put in the uh, appropriate copyright notices, you're allowed to fork it and don't even need to ask permission. That's nice. Which unfortunately also means that anything you do derivative of it is GPL as well, but that ain't no big deal. I'm updated, by the way. I don't know how everyone else is doing. I think I'm good. I'm good. All right, uh, guys. Actually, this is a uh, great stopping point for the evening, and we will be starting part three of book six next game. All right, when's me? Okay, I have one question for you then. Um. Can you get me a list of languages that are actually relevant in the campaign? Because I'm going off of the default list under skills and linguistics. So if we're using languages other than what's listed there, can you please let me know so I can, you know, get those as appropriate with like my linguistics languages? Uh, yes, I will. Um, so. Just let me know what other languages are considered. Now, obviously, if, it, if it's something completely out there, like Elder Thing, I get it, right? But on the flip side, if we're like all undead speak in Necrol, that's something that's important to know that would make sense as part of the broader world, right? Not like a right. specific weird, strange thing here, so. And, you know, a lot of it, I don't mind playing by ear either, so. Okay. I mean, I, I'm fine saying that I will pick up the next language that seems relevant to me if you want, uh, if you're willing to do that. And obviously not on a, oh, this is literally what we use now, but more like, yeah, that would make sense that I would know that. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, I will um, I'll flip through and uh, see what's coming up language-wise and let you know. And everybody except Steph is available for next week? Should be. I believe so. Okay. All right, I'll let you know if anything changes. Uh, not a problem. I did update the calendar. I have no schedule conflict, so we're playing every Saturday this month. Cool. Perfect. Beans. Great. Cool. Beans, beans that are cool. I agree with that. All right, gentlemen and Poppy, I will see you all next week, same time. Whoa, 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 you're just female too. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Ladies yeah, and me. gentlemen. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't detect the feminine touch there? <laughs> well, with the feathered hairdress, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> well, well, I mean, clearly that's the feminine part. Wow. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm I, 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 he, he's usually not this rude, Rita. Uh, 
my uh, Sunday game, I've got a brand new RPG player. Never played before, but he's gotten really into it. And his very first session, he drank from the fountain. And I turned him from male to female. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his first question, uh, what size are my breast? <laughs> Well, what really happened is he discovered he was a lesbian all along because he likes girls. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, absolutely. All right, gentlemen, you all have a uh, great weekend, and we'll see you next Saturday. See ya. See ya. See ya.